Season's greetings and welcome to our latest episode of the Hidden London Hangouts. My name's Alex Grund and Merry Christmas to you. I was told to make it more Christmassy, so I've done it. Look at that. They're rather nice, aren't they? Um, we are going to go somewhere really cool. Possibly my favourite disused tube station ever today. So I'm hugely excited. It's going to look a little bit different. This is going to be like an epic slideshow because there's so much cool stuff. Uh, I don't do this on my own. I've got three amazing people from the London Transport Museum to help me. First of all, the very besuited Chris Nix is looking stunning with a wreath. Hello, Nick. Hello, Alex. How are you? Uh, yeah, um, I've had to get out two roundels today, one for the station name and the other one because it's getting towards Christmas. So uh, yeah, and also today is brought to you by the letter H. For Christmas, presumably, it'll be lovely. And Hoban. <gasps> Did I say that? Oh, uh, City Holloway's here as well. Hello, City. Hello. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm afraid I don't have that many Christmas decorations in my flat. So uh, not that I don't love Christmas. It's just that normally I go to my parents' house. And so I don't bother putting that much stuff up. But I do have a second round also double roundling up as well. Um, very important, of course. That's beautiful. Double, I think like triple roundling here going on. It's a little bit crazy. And uh, I always think of a bit like the Queen's speech doing this. It's like, it's been an Anna Terribilis. Certainly has. Laura Hilton Brown, you're looking lovely and very festive too. Thank you, Mr. Alex Grundon. I've got my snowflake jumper on. I've got my little choo choo Christmas train decoration um, and my lovely little randals because I copied you because I loved yours so much. So I got myself some as well. Um, but where is your sparkle, Mr. Grundon? Give me a minute, all right? Just give me Ooh. a minute. Give me a minute. Okay. Keep talking. That's exciting. I, I wasn't expecting that. It's no, always interesting really. when he disappears, isn't it? I always get a bit worried, to be honest with you. Well, what's he going to bring think, back? Okay. What sparkles? Alex Grundon and sparkles. I'm nervous. How much do you want it? Hey. Is that enough? Hey. 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 <laughs> this is cool. Look, this is what I love about this. If I just stand up, look at that, kids. It's all the way around the edge. My little tubey Randall. So yeah, it's that Christmassy enough for you, Laura. Do you yeah. know what? I sent my little seven-year-old boy into school with his Christmas jumper from the LT Museum and his Christmas hat for a little nativity today. And you kind of look <laughs> you're looking quite similar with your ensemble there. I like you know, it. I, I, I think I've, I've I've done what you asked me to do. I'm do you know what you have? Sent it in a grotto. I've been very demanding. I've been very demanding, which everyone should just do what they like to do for Christmas. It's absolutely fine. I just go a little bit crazy. So, you know. Well, I think I've completely gone loopy on this one. But anyway, I'm not in shot for much of this today, which is why I'm dressed like this. We are going to Hoban and the really the disused platforms at Hoban because there are two, well, one now, secret platforms that very few people know about. Um, they are a spectacle to see. We are hugely excited about this. First of all, Chris, Hoban Tube Station, as we know it now, two Piccadilly line platforms, two central line platforms, but it wasn't always like that, was it? And take us back to December 1906. Yeah, specifically the 15th when Hoban Station first opened. We're almost on, on, the, on, on the anniversary for it in the run up to Christmas. Um, and a station designed by Leslie Green uh, opened up there on the corner of the street on, on Kingsway. And about a year later, Oldwich Station opened up as a little branch line running out from those now disused platforms. Uh, the station was typical of Leslie Green designs. Uh, it was a lift operated station and quite simple. But in 1933, the decision was made to close the neighbouring British Museum station on the central line, amalgamate uh, the central line interchange with the Piccadilly line at Hoburn, uh, and uh, to also convert it from a lift operated station to an escalator operated station to improve passenger flow. So the station carried on uh, being used uh, as a little branch line out to Oldwich uh, until uh, 1994, when with only about 450 return journeys being made a day, the decision was made to close that branch line on the 30th of September. Uh, and that's how the platforms five and six at Hoban came to be disused. Fabulous. Mm. And this is um, a station city which has got so much ripe potential for tours, but also for anyone who's into tiles, trains, history, dirt, 
it's all Every, down there, isn't it? Everything. Yeah, I mean, it's such a fantastic station. I remember first going down there. It just has so many really odd parts to it uh, that, you know, it takes you a while to get your head around it. But when you do, you realise that you've just got this whole other world but beyond what you just see when you use Holborn Station today. And it's even going to be remodelled in the future. Uh, and we might lose some of the features that we're going to show you today. So it's an ever-evolving, changing site that's... I mean, it's got some amazing witness marks, amazing tiles, lots of grime and dirt. So uh, I can't wait to show you all about it. I love this. Is that the witness marks is one of those things that we say a lot in these uh, episodes. It's basically stuff you point at and go, oh, that's interesting. And Laura, you and I are massive tile fans. I am a self-confessed lover of these platforms because I think they're probably my favourite for lots of reasons. Um, the tile work down there is gl glorious, isn't it? Oh, that's a good word. It's glorious. Do you know what it really is? And I think, guys, it is my new absolute favourite. I'm going to put it up there. It's, it's, it's got the top spot. Actually, what's lovely about this episode is um, you mentioned then, Alex, that Holborn opened. Do you know what? I've forgotten if I say Holborn or Hoban. 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 I think Hoban. I'm going to mix it up and use both. Right. I totally don't I, know what I'm Holborn. saying. Holborn. <laughs> I, hope I, I feel like now, just because you want I'm, me to do it a different way, I feel like I want to rebel and, and do it another way, Alex. Let's, let's do it. it. Let's do it. I'm afraid oh, I'm going to have to stage an intervention oh, no. on this one because you see, you've got to go with the origin of it. No, so it's, no. a, it's originally, it's a bit like Old Witch, it's a portmanteau of some Old English. It is, right. Yeah. So, Hol, which is short for hollow. <laughs> And then burn. Um, burner, which is uh, the Old English for river. And I'm just yeah. looking over here because I'm just breaking through right? to find the, the right image to show you, Alex. Um, so remember, it's the river fleet which runs down uh, in that part of the world. And we call it a river, but really it was a sewer. And it looks like that the river fleet Ooh. is actually effectively a sewer um yeah. running underground at that point but if we take the hull and the burn out of burner it in old english it would be hull burn i'm gonna say Not one Hoburn. thing i'm gonna say one thing to you guys this train is going to hoban that's what it says <laughs> on all the trains this is hoban so anyway, whatever you call it, we've got potato, so much potato. to show you today. And we so much stuff, Chris. Hit us with this massive, great long slideshow of delights from this station. So, oh, I love this. You know, we're doing a slideshow. You know, I get excited about slideshows. Uh, you know, it's really my forte <laughs> in many ways. Um, but this is the uh, outside of Hoban Station. It's probably around the 20s or 30s because it's got that canopy on the outside. But what's really, well, not the 30s, it would have been the 20s, late 20s. You, you get what I mean. 21. Uh, that's exactly what I thought knew that was a test and you passed. Uh, 1921 with the canopy on the outside um, and what was really interesting about this uh, station was that it was a Leslie Green station on the Piccadilly line as Chris said before but because it was situated on the Kingsway which was an LCC or London County Council, you remember that from the Kingsway episode, uh, because it was situated on Kingsway the LCC had kind of, um, they had permission to sort of put an input into what this station was going to look like and they didn't want them to use the very lovely ox blood red tiles because they felt it jarred too much with the surrounding buildings that were being built. So instead, they built a typical Leslie Green station using granite on the outside, which was tainted red. And if you look really closely, you kind of see that it isn't a typical Leslie Green station. And weirdly enough, they also added a, a kind of um, a portal right at the end there, which, which is being disguised by that tree which uh, was also in a different color, which a uh, different color, which was in, in Portland stone. So really interesting that it was basically the only kind of Leslie Green station that got a special kind of treatment. So sh show us the next one, uh, Chris, because it really was this architectural curiosity, wasn't it? 
Yeah, it was, and it was set on the end of uh, Kingsway, so it would be towards the top of this photo. And the branch line down to Oldwich, which is just out of shot, the, the station would be just out of shot in the bottom of the photo. Running the sort of north line to south ran picture, down underneath that it? wide road. It's That's very... right, so north at the top, south at the bottom. And it ran underneath Oldwich and to the, to the station that we all knew. And of course, when Oldwich opened, it was called Strand. Mm -hmm was and it because of this branch line coming off Hoban station it meant that it required quite an unusual layout uh, of the of the station below ground so uh, there we go we have the uh, the station plan there we can see the lift shafts at the top and a complex set of passageways leading down to the four platforms um, yeah. So, so what we can see there then, uh, Chris, is the bottom blue line, the wavy line, that is the northbound Piccadilly line as we know it now. That's yeah, right, that, yeah, that heads North off to Finsbury Park. Bound, to the yeah. 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 yeah, And then you've got the, the bits that go off to Oldwich, which was Strand, and that's the, I suppose, the top blue line that looks quite straight, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's Both the second blue line down is the, the one that goes off to Oldwich, and then that, right. that one at the top is the one that's heading off towards Hammersmith. That's the, uh, that's the westbound. Oh, wow, and okay. See, and then when you see the one that's r furthest to the right and doesn't have a blue infill in it, that is, was also one that led down to Aldwych, that one. Thank you very much, Chris. That was platform six, um, and it was a bay platform, so it was really unusual. It was not typical for Leslie Green Station. So Aldwych initially had two platforms. It had um, that shuttle service that could enter into the Piccadilly line and kind of kind of shunt its way over into, into the Hammersmith service, or, or sort of into, yeah, basically that, or, uh, just a bay platform for a shuttle but that bay platform was never really um well used and was closed in april 1917 so it's been closed for over 100 years um and has been reused ever since so we've got just a, a recap so far in 1906 december 1906 the line opened you've got the piccadilly line that was going North, um, Finsbury Park to Hammersmith. Then you had this branch that in 1907 that opened to Strand, which is was called Aldwych Lastly, which is now shut. And what you can see in that map that we just saw, that, that design is the two platforms that went off to Strand or Aldwych, one of them shut a few years later. So there's only one really left and that one remained open until 1994 when it shut. And in this episode, we're gonna take you down onto that platform and see what's left of it. Thank you very much. I just wanted to give you a little update on that because there's so much to take in. Um, what have we got next, Chris? Well, I did mention that the station was converted from being a lift station. So let's, let's take a look at what the lifts looked like. So rather like the ones that we're used to seeing uh, when, we, when we looked at Oldwich, uh, would have had a lift man to operate them, uh, uh, operate the controls. Um, but in 1933, uh, the station reopened with these rather magnificent escalators. Oh, look at the uplighters. Laura, mm. look at the uplighters. I know they're phenomenal, aren't they? That do you know what? That's such a lovely picture as well, isn't it? It reminds me of the poster of Brightest London last week, but without oh, yeah. um, the colour. And um, mm. I guess people there are more working than going out, out. But um, there's something that just takes my brain back to that poster momentarily. There, lovely. It's classy and warm, isn't it? I suppose that sepia helps. But, um, but, but you, yeah, you know, was was quite interesting. I, I read an or I read an excerpt from an oral history that we have of somebody who worked at the station at the time, and they said that most frequented passengers were printers, and people from around there worked in the newspapers of Fleet Street and whatnot. So I thought that was interesting. Very kind of right. direct people, he said. Yeah. The outside was equally grand because the station had been remodelled by Charles Holden. So if we take a look at that, uh, this uh, was the facade some, um, when it was still relatively clean and finished in Portland stone. And that is really what we see these days, isn't it? It's not really changed much. And you can still see, and funnily enough, on the left-hand side, you can still see one of those Leslie Green arches. That was in the opening credits to Only Fools and Horses. Did you know that? The TV show, Only Fools and Horses. No, I did not know I did that. not either. Well, yeah. We so, live and we learn. <laughs> so um, the we talked earlier about, the, um, about that little bit of... Um, 
station that was built in Portland Stone originally, and that does survive today and has been fairly recently cleaned up. Um, so this is when uh, Alex, City and I uh, were walking around doing a walking tour in central London and stopped to have a look at the only Leslie Green station uh, in Portland Stone. It's remarkable and it, it just looks like someone's taken the colour away, someone's washed the red off. It looks so, yeah. so cool. <laughs> What's next then, Chris? It, so um, the inside of it got a rather nice treatment as well. This, this um, ticket hall remains today, but looks rather different. And um, here we can see it with a persimeter in the middle of the ticket hall. It's where you could buy your ticket. Um, we have one of these in our collection that came from Queensway that looks almost identical to this one. I'd love to know, you know, the word persimeter, we were talking about this earlier, weren't we? The word persimeter, pass meter, if you like, it, it strikes me that I wonder if somebody was in there actually counting mm. people going in and out of the station. Sort of if like a, where it might, like a nightclub for, bouncer. A clicker. You know, like if you get on a low cost <laughs> airline and they go through going click, 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 click. I oh, so you go to you go to airlines. I go to nightclubs. That's good. I bet you do, babe. <laughs> yeah, it says it all, doesn't it? I want to get out of here. You want to get into there? I think Alex, the oh, original God. ones did have turnstiles on them, so they uh, you know they could perform that function. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Next. And if we drop down to the platforms, then uh, we can see what the the new central line platforms look like at Herburn. We've got a lovely uh, old train coming in. Um, and if you look to the left of the, the train, you can see there's quite a wide walkway that's been left because this is a tunnel which has been widened out to accommodate the train. It's, it's interesting, interesting as well, isn't it? So, sorry, babe, uh, uh, just no. to say, you know, when, when Charles Holden took over the design of this station, you can really see the effect it had on the tile work. Anyone who knows anything about stations that were designed by Charles Holden, if you imagine like the top end of the Piccadilly line or uh, maybe Bethnal Green or something like that, you can really see that the beige tiles and the, and the very, very clear line work on there, can't you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Well, they were clearly quite uh, proud of this, um, this alteration because um, a poster was produced then to um, really highlight Hoban as this new interchange since the central line had been uh, amalgamated into, uh, into the station. Um, and it, it's quite a dynamic poster that, almost a compass, but mm. notably Oldwich missing, the Oldwich branch missing. It's quite interesting yeah. as well because because um, after the First World War, Hoban had started becoming so overcrowded that they had this kind of queuing system um, of, of people getting into the station and then the escalators fixed it momentarily and then uh, we basically had, at least pre-COVID, pre <laughs> the same problem arising again. So It's a phenomenally um, busy station in it, Sid. I mean, whenever I go there, there's people just milling around everywhere. It's quite a complicated station. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, do we want to jump to the next era, which is its wartime use? <clears throat> yeah, mm. that, well, I mean, that says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it does rather. Um, so people, of course, use the platforms for shelter during the Second World War and had, who wouldn't want a lovely cup of tea out of a watering can while you're uh, sheltering there, but um, most of them seem to look happy. Yeah, it's nice because you see the, the the original kind of bullseye roundel there with Hoban Kingsway in brackets behind it because uh, the station was renamed Hoban Kingsway uh, in Ki Kingsway in brackets uh, when it reopened in thirty three and then gradually the brackets were lost. See, I I thought you were going to go off in a similar odyssey to the Hyde Park Corner one and notice the Nestle's milk chocolate machine. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> It's amazing that, I mean, I, I always look to Laura for these sort of uh, moments really in those uh, pictures because they, they, people look relatively comfortable down there, don't they, broadly? I was thinking the same, exact, literally exactly the same thing. And I liked that, that, you know, they all look so well turned out and well presented considering, you know, what they're going through at the time with the coats and the shirts and ties and the you know, their hats and the lady having her cup of tea poured by the uh, watering can in the with the lovely fur collar. Um, and they're all kind of, you know, they look okay. They look like they're surviving this, they're getting through it. Um, 
and I think there was a there was a little peak of tiles there behind um, some of them as well, and you can just kind of make up make out that lovely geometric um, pattern as well. Um, but what what I was saying before uh, before I triggered the rather contentious Holborn Hoban debate um, was that. Obviously, uh, we're, we're kind of chatting about this episode now, and it's only really a few days away from when the station opened back in 1906. What did you say it was, um, Alex, the 15th of December? Uh, the 15th of December, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, we're, I mean, we're super close, aren't we? So what a lovely kind of nod towards, you know, Holborn, uh, that, we're, that we're, doing, we're doing this at, the, at this time. I think that's a really, um, a really nice thing. Um, and my, my kind of journey with... Um, Holbin started as really as a commuter because it was one of the first stations that I traveled to when I worked near Chancery Lane and Lincoln's Inn Field. Um, and so I have kind of that little soft spot of, you know, it was a daily commute station for me. Um, and then the next I kind of saw of it was when we did some health and safety training for um, our Aldwych Hidden London tour, uh, which required us to, um, sorry, required us to uh, walk along the track and so my next kind of exploration was uh, turning up at Platform 5, Chris? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. At Platform Anybody? 5. Anybody? <laughs> this is taking us back to what Stiddy was saying before, that actually it's kind of, you, you, it's one of those stations that you do have to get your head round a little bit. Um, and it's quite new on my radar, so um, I haven't got that kind of little mind map of it down quite yet. Um, so when we did the site visit there, Chris Diddy and I, um, a short while ago, um, I did have to keep asking them where we were and how you kind of got to the other bits because I wasn't, I wasn't kind of, I wasn't quite there yet. Well, it so took I, all of us a little bit of that. I think now, you know, when we've been doing the virtual tours, I had to sort of sit over that plan and be like, okay, so we walked there and then um, did we do that? So I think, I think yeah. you're not alone in that. <laughs> So the, the other thing about that station as well that I love is whenever you go to, um, the, especially the disused bits of Hoban, um, anyone who's been in London a particularly long time and ever used that station will know exactly where you look to find the door that you used to go through from the Piccadilly line to get to the Aldwych shuttle. It used to be on a metal gate when it was first closed off when 1994 to a while, and that's got a massive metal gate on it, or a massive metal door on it. But there's also, when you get into the area that you'd normally traverse to go to Aldwych, there's loads of windy tunnels, and we're gonna show you all of that in a minute with some really, really cool photographs. And the, I mean, the moving stuff is amazing. And it's just, it's a, really, it's a treasure trove. Chris, um, we've still got so much more to hit at. So let's have a little look-see. So that is the, um, the central line platform. Again, really interesting how the freeze says Hoban. That's a, that must be fairly shortly after, in the 1930s, mustn't it? This is actually a bit further on. This is a uh, sixty late sixties, I oh, believe. So they kept all those tiles all that time. Mm. Wow! And what what I particularly like about this one, uh, Alex, is when I was doing a little research earlier, I realised that the sign that you can see in the top right there saying "Way Out" uh, to Piccadilly Line platforms um, ha happens to be in our collection um, from when the uh, the station was remodelled later. In the that's 80s. Oh, beautiful. that's so nice. Look at that, uh, the casing around it. That's great. Lovely, isn't it? Show us more, Lovely. Chris, what we got. Sure. One for City. <clears throat> oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> the bird's eye nest. Yeah, I wanted to do this. Do you, the, the reason why is because, so this is on the lower lift landing down at Aldwych, no, Aldwych, Hoven. I'm confused now, guys. Um, <laughs> but... Um, it was the reason I wanted to share this with you is because Hoban or Holborn, whatever we're going to call it, <laughs> Hoban uh, was the first station on the London Underground to get CCTV. And it was the first place that also opened an operations room, which is what that is. And from the newly installed CCTV, whoever was in charge could there then uh, make announcements to passengers if they were being naughty. So I just thought that was quite interesting. Very interesting. You are full of your trivia, Sid. We love you for that. And um, that all seeing eye thing, that's gone now, though, is it? Or is it still it there? It is, yeah. So you're it's safe to go through there now, Alex. Oh, is well, it? No one's looking at me. <laughs> I'm off sure I'd get away with it. I'm sure <laughs> I'd get away with it. What's next, Chris? Well, it's then the sad moment of the closure. Oh. So there we go. This is where that um, those tiny number of journeys that were being made each day could no longer sustain. 
the station and therefore platforms five and six at Hoban become disused wow. and they the become the same day as the Epping the and Omberline place... shut, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, well, look at you look, in that picture. Look at me. So, Very right, handsome. So, so the story of this, okay, guys, is that when Chris and I met and we became friends, we decided that instead of doing just basic pub nights, he would take me to a tube station for a look round. And so we used to call these, we still do actually call them mandates. And the first one, our very first mandate was to Hoban Kingsway. So always very special to me because that's where Chris's and my friendship really started to burgeon. But most importantly, it is a station which is mind blowingly fabulous. And if you think what you've seen so far is good, watch what happens next. So now we're going to jump forward in time to earlier this year when Sidney Laura and I went to shoot some footage for one of our virtual tours. So just to say, what you've just seen is the spiral staircase that is not the spiral emergency staircase that anyone would use now. That is really for staff isn't it yeah yeah <laughs> yep uh yeah it's used <laughs> as an access we're like yep yeah, whatever uh it's used as an access point for the staff yeah. members if they need to get down below without you know getting on the escalator or whatnot so it's just a reroute area for them to be able to go through plus there are a couple of as you may have seen there are a few landings there um that go into the lift shaft and they are you know mess there's one that's kind of a mess room there's a CER or a, um, an electricity room so they're used for things cool lovely stuff and we you're walking through what presumably is a half finished tunnel this is yes. part of the old running tunnel actually wow yeah so that wow. that behind us would have uh, would have gone to oldwich and that um, are we so that bit there that you're walking through would that have gone to the platform that closed first is that platform yeah six? so in front of us in that photo behind the camera is platform six which we'll we'll come to shortly um but uh, here we see laura on platform five look at a grubby individual and yeah. laura there as well well you know, this this was the first time that um i'd kind of i was in proper exploration mode um and i was kind of Laura, left to my own devices again. laura the explorer laura yes. the explorer these and I tell you, so, I bet you'd never wear a pale grey coat down there again, would you? It's filthy. <laughs> <laughs> I should know better as well, right? Error. <laughs> it's pretty cool that I love that. I, I just like already I'm getting excited about, I tell you something, I should never sit on the floor to record these uh, Hidden London Hangouts because my legs keep going to sleep. I'm up and down and up and down, fidgeting. Incredible. So um, back to this amazing stuff, Chris, because honestly, I can't get enough of it. I cannot get enough of it. So here we are, subterranean at Holborn, and I just want to do a lovely shout out to this tile combination here. Might be my new favourite. I'll take it back to the team, see what they think. So, what do you think, guys? What do you think? I love that. that. Definitely gets my vote. Yay. Totally agree. I I, there's the something colours. like a candy cane feel to it, which makes it a kind of Christmassy. Oh, yeah, I it's like got a that. Candy, yeah, I like and it, that. It's, I, I don't, you know, it's funny. It's a really weird colour combination because it feels like there are more colours than other stations. I know there aren't, yeah. but it feels like there's more. It's so because beautiful. Because it's a contrast, yeah, because it's such a stark contrast of like blue and red that you think, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? It's, it's so <laughs> lovely. This is why I love that station so much. I think the, the blue is just starting to nudge turquoise, which is why that tiny bit of green hinting at it goes well with the red. Um, I think if it's just blue, it wouldn't work quite so well, but it's a really extraordinary combination, I think, those two. Mm. Lovely. Well, Laura is our tile expert, so, you know, if it's your favourite, it's our favourite. We love it. Excellent. Good work, team. Good work. And there it is again. Look, look at that. I mean, that is the, um, the poster paper, um, Piccadilly line diagram of where you're going and there's something also uh chris about the arrow that's used because there's three of those wafty bits i know you've got a name yeah for it. so Me mexican arrow is the term for it and uh the the more flights it has the older it is uh is the rule 
uh, until we use arrows today that don't have any flights. Can I all. make a can I make a um a, a a request to our viewers? So um this is as Chris said is called a Mexican arrow, uh, and we've been trying very well very hard to find out why it's called a Mexican arrow. Um, we've got quite a few kind of um, ideas and suggestions, but we haven't actually found uh, a concrete answer. It may have just been a coll colloquial kind of nickname for it, but if anyone does know, do send us a message. We'll let you know all of our Instagram handles at the end of this episode. So if just slip into our DMs and tell us what you think the answer is, because this fascinates Sidney and Chris, certainly fascinates the rest of us. So get us an answer we would love to know you didn't let us down with the tile one in season one so let's see what we can do with this one um so we've got a little short film clip here because um i was busily shooting some first person footage for our virtual tour of hope and kingsway um and laura and city were doing some pieces to camera as you've just seen and very occasionally uh, those two things come into conflict i'm loving this section of holbein how are you feeling all right now? I love it. Oh, my God. Oh. It's really it's dusty hot. down it's here. Hot here. It's hot and um, dusty, isn't it? Just seeing that, that's amazing. Isn't it? Look at Sidney's face. <laughs> uh, well, it just goes to show you don't want to uh, irritate a Chris Nix while he's rolling. Well, that's very kind. Thank you. <laughs> he's, he's, a man with, he's a man with a mission and a camera on a... Is it a giblet? Do you, mean a gim do you mean a gimbal? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> is it a gimbal? Wow, that's oh, yes, a... I'm going to get out gimbal. of Turkey on Christmas Day. I don't know. That would be a messy camera rig. Yeah. Oh, Alex, God, Alex you got, is going to waft you with his arrow in a minute. I'm going to waft you with the arrow and I'll just, I'll just stick my giblet on the bottom of my phone. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> what what is it called? Chris? A gable? A, a, gimbal, a gimbal, is it? Gimbal. A gimbal. A gimbal. A gimbal. <laughs> oh, a gimbal. Who knows now is, stuck on the end know. of a house. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I was just thinking a gimlet, and I was like, isn't that a tasty cocktail? Uh, I, think it is a, a, I think a gimlet is a cocktail. Um, so it's not a giblet that you put on the bottom of a camera, is it? Anyway, moving on swiftly, Chris, bring us back to life. <laughs> what? I know how much, uh, Alex, you like some tiling. So here's uh, his Piccadilly line platform at Hoban and it's original tiling. And you know, the thing is that now at Hoban, everything is just uh, sort of blocked off, isn't it? With those, mu those massive colorful chunks of stuff that's all glued to the walls. That's what's still behind it. It's just beautiful. I love it. Look, oh, look oh. at that. And that, that is why I love this station because you're gonna see it in a minute, but there's a little phone box just in the left hand there, but also Laura, look at those amazing tiles and the original friezes on the Piccadilly line were a pale blue. So that top and bottom line on the frieze, they're much more like the Victoria line colour now. I love that picture. It is amazing, isn't it? And Siddy, you're really good at the kind of whole mural styly thing. Um, so that was not the technical term, but there you go. Um, is this the retiling from the 1980s, if I got that right? No, this is no. the original tiling, this Leslie original. Green. So this is your fav new favourite, but that's just the pattern that Hoban had originally. So, you know, each station had both its own colour schemes. It also had its own tiling pattern. So, and, and, um, and so when they say that... There's the a cartouche painted over. Mm. Yeah. So the, the, the so pattern was... aura is only there on the platform. So it stripes in the passageways, but you get these chevron patterns on the platform. So I've got myself confused, which I know is quite um, a regular occurrence. But where have I read? I've got something in my head that's saying that some of the tiling at Hoburn represents the kind of Roman and Egyptian um like the murals represent that. Have, have, oh, am I, am... Yeah, oh. so this is, this is platform five. So this is yeah. a disused platform. So that's why it's still in its original shape. But um, the platform you're talking about is the one that you actually use today on the Piccadilly line. And I think ah. Chris has actually got a photo of that for yeah. us too. They, and I'm just it's part of the running pattern, ahead to try and find the it. printed pattern on those big um, panels that now probably covers over the original tile work. There it is. Like that. Boom. <laughs> central oh, line, God. there you go. Central line platform, because you've got the red over the Hoban. Yeah, for okay. A, for a bonus point, 
Where were those tried out before they were applied at Hogan? Oh, do you think? Go on. Come on, guys. Anybody? Come on, anyone. We've Anybody? told you before. I love this. Well, they were all Anybody? tested and tried out <laughs> at Old, Old Witch. Witch. Down the corridor, <laughs> just down the tracks. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And they're just, we've got so much more stuff to show you. I'm, I know this is a bit like a peculiar slideshow today, but we just thought, do we talk or do we show? We'd rather show. So here we are, next one. The view down platform five, Old Witch is behind us in this shot. And so the Piccadilly line, it would join the Piccadilly line uh, to, the to the very bottom of that shot, like at the end of this track, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. That's right. So when you stand there um, today, you see the Piccadilly line going sort of past and it's heading towards Hammersmith and, and towards Heathrow and it's kind of coming past you there. It's amazing. And look at the, the, the original tiles there. You've got the cream, you've got the red and you've got a bit of the blue. And then on the right hand side, you've got presumably where they test out what those new freezes look like. Because, I mean, this is now this platform is now effectively a test bed, isn't it? Really a store and a test bed. Exactly right. Um, uh, and uh, you can see a lot of different stations having stuff tested out there. The other thing, Alex, you mentioned before about one of the cartouches being painted over, you can see it more clearly there. We think a wartime relic where that green, uh, lesser green cartouche has been painted out to avoid confusing people with the flow. And it's funny you mentioned about the war because platform six, particularly, well, that this is the one that shut very, very early on, was hardly used. Um, that was used for very specific purposes during the war, wasn't it, Sids? It was, yeah. So because it had been closed since 1917, it meant that that part of the station had been out of action for so long. And so when it came to uh, the Second World War, and of course we saw some, some civilians sheltering on the, on the platform there, but actually also need space for staff members to be able to shelter. So uh, all of Platform 6 was converted into accommodation for staff members to be able to sleep off the raids or, or, or stay down there in, in relative safety. And then later on, because of that conversion, they've just kept on using it for various things. Um, we did go down there, of course, and we shot some uh, very interesting footage. So, Chris, do you want to uh, show us? <laughs> Great segue. Right, guys, we are at Holborn, the disused parts of Holborn Station. Want to say hi, guys? Hey! Woohoo! So we're in uh, what was called Platform 6. The noise that you're hearing is, uh, is a, a ventilation fan. But these rooms that I'm walking past here, they were all dormitories or offices used during the Second World War. Um, this facility was actually known as the hotel because uh, it was where people could actually come and, and stay who worked for London Transport. Isn't that right? It is. And this is Laura's first visit here. No, I've never actually been to this one before. So is this original um, like lettering and marking on here? So that's wartime modification. That's number number nine. Number eight uh, doesn't look like any, any other one survived. But and you can see inside them, the walls have been painted over, so the tiles are still there. Been painted over. These are good sized rooms as well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Alright, so we are in Now, um, I actually just spotted something I wanted to show you guys. So, uh, just down, if we look on the floor, that's actually the, the edge of the platform that we're just walking on there. The old platform. Never mind the gap sign. And do you know the other thing I really love about that was when you used to go down there, there used to be a model railway club in one of the rooms for a period of time. So there's so many reasons why I just love this place so, so much. Um, it's really cool to, to see you guys down there as well, obviously deeply jealous, but it's really nice to see how much stuff you managed to get from down there. Um, Chris, have we got any more? Um, have, we, have we any more? Any more? Anybody? Um no, the because um, we've we've done this one already. So uh, we we finish with it as it looks today. Well, actually, what we can add briefly, which um, uh, we I alluded to earlier when I talked about the station, is that there is of course a plan that Transport for London is going to add a new entry into Hoban Station. They're going to add a bunch of escalators, and those escalators, if the plan goes ahead, will actually come in on top and through Platform 5 that we just had a look at, um, effectively demolishing it. So we might be on a very tight schedule of actually being able to show people what's there and what's left, because um, as we said before, it's such a 
really busy station, uh, an upgrade into it is really needed. So um, it's on a, it's on a clock, really. Oh, love this. Thank you, team. What an amazing episode in that it's not been about us so much. It's actually just been about amazing pictures and footage and stuff like that. Thank you so much. Um, there's so much more to see. Keep your eyes on the LT Museum website as well, because I'm sure there's more stuff, hint, more stuff to be coming on Hoban Kingsway particularly. Um, that's going to be marvellous. Got a few notes, queries and questions. Trevor Barwood's been in touch. He said, my grandparents were from Bow and would tell us of sleeping on platforms during the Blitz. Interesting, we're talking about that at Hoban today. Um, I've been obsessed with the tube since. I'm going to catch the new episodes and hope to attend an event sometime soon. Thanks for all you do. Thanks, Trevor, as well for that. Um, Ian Kelly, one, two, three, Graham, after our posters episode last week, sent us his own video of his favourites, which we just love. Take a look at this. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for allowing me to share with you my favourite London Underground posters from over the years. My third favourite is from 1947. It shows a flying saucer positioned above the city, casting a shadow onto the people and buildings below. For me, this is very symbolic. It shows London's transport system as the city's guardian, watching over it at all times and on all occasions. My second favourite poster is from 1912. It shows back then just how rural the Wembley and Harrow areas were, offering people the opportunity to live a countryside lifestyle while still being connected directly to the city, something that before just wasn't possible. But my favourite poster is from 1995, fantastic piece by David Booth showing the Tate Gallery and a tube map as a painting. For me, this is one of the most creative and fun posters I've ever seen. And even today, it's still recognisable as a tube map. And it's just so much fun. If you were to ask anyone what they thought of this poster, they would say just how creative and fun it looks. See, Laura, I reckon Tate was the winner as well, don't you? Beautiful. Absolutely. Do you know what? Love that poster. It's um, really iconic. Really iconic. Gorgeous stuff. And there's a third um, notes querying question from Alex from the Hidden London Hangouts team. And this is for Chris <laughs> Nix. OK, a bit of extra work for you for next week. Um, I had a couple of bottles of Prosecco with a friend last night and I thought it'd be a really good idea to ride the Kennington Loop on the Northern Line. Only I got kicked off the train twice. Why is that? Well, Alex, I'm going to say that I think it's because uh, it's not passenger certified and therefore you get London Underground into trouble if you were to try and ride on it as a passenger. Um, but I'm going to check in case there's any other reasons uh, in time for our next episode. Love a bit of homework for Chris Nix. This is marvellous. City mm. uh, Holloway, thank you so much for everything you've done today. It was beautiful. Thank you so much. What a fun episode. Loads of stuff and loads of things to see. As 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 uh, Laura said, loads of stuff. I've literally, I've literally, my eyes are boggled. Laura, your tiles, your everything, you're fantastic, your Christmas. Ah, oh, do you know what? I don't think I gave enough kudos to, um, kudos, <laughs> Holborn, <laughs> kudos, <laughs> to um, Chris's wreath around his light box there. So, I've been giving him a little bit of grief about decorations. So sorry, Chris, I know you not, don't traditionally put them up for a while. So thank you for humouring me with your wreath. And um, yeah, great all. You, huh? you laid down a challenge I was willing to accept. Well, I know, I have, I have I, as I said, I have been rather demanding, but you've all stepped up. So I think it's great. But yeah, um, yeah, I hadn't been to Holborn um, in, in that capacity before. So that was really good fun. And I'm looking forward to the four of us now that we can get back out and about again um, because of lockdown, doing some site visits together mm. so that we are a crew underground doing stuff. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And he's got a bit of greenery around his box, but he's also well lit as well. You're looking fantastic, Chris. Thank you for everything you've done as well today. Thank you, Alex. And uh, as they say, you say Hoban, I say Holborn. Let's, Let's call the whole thing. Exactly. <laughs> Let's do that. Now, don't forget, if you're into Instagram, come find us. Alex Grundon, City Holloway, Chris Nix and Hidden London Law, as well as LT Museum. If you've got a question about anything that we talk about or indeed anything about London transport, drop into our DMs and we'll get an answer for you. And don't forget on YouTube right down below, like and subscribe and also comment and join us at six o'clock every Saturday for the live chat that goes along with every episode. Next week, we're going somewhere equally fantastic. In the meantime, have yourself a great day and stay safe.